All right, so let's take a look at the wizard and uh, we'll get this uh, sphere ready to paint. So we have it selected and then we just go ahead and click the wizard. And since we started with the selected, this will be just fine. Go next and optical cubic mapping, that'll be just fine. and create a material, just color, sounds good. And we'll create a square material. And finish and close. All right, so now <coughs> notice we have a new material and a UV tag. And these are our UV coordinates. So notice since we um, we chose this type of sphere, it, it, it kind of has like the, like it's like a cube that's sort of pushed out. So um, each of those facets are a, a two-dimensional uh, face in our, our UV page. And our material, let's, uh, let's look at our material here, has just color in it. Like here, if we, uh, if we look at this, I'm actually gonna turn off the reflectance for now. And so all we have is this material that's sort of created on the fly. This is not saved to the hard drive anywhere. So potentially, I could go and paint something up, render it, and then uh, 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 delete the file without having ever saved the, the bitmap. So that's a real strength of, uh, of body paint, in, in my opinion. Because, you know, sometimes you don't want to have folders with just these, you know, zillions of these little simple... Um, uh, materials that you just had to keep around, you know. So uh, that's just 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 one aspect. But but certainly, if you're having a um, <clears throat> a project that's more complex, obviously you're going to save this material out and come back and, and refer to it. All right. So let's uh, let's just take a look at what it does. Just its uh, its basic uh, thing. Let's uh, let's look at the layers. And so by default, this has created a a, a tiff. But uh, you can also save to a layered Photoshop file, or it, there's a native body paint uh, uh, format uh, too. And certainly, if you're just saving the file out, you can save it out to anything that Photoshop can save it out to. But here, let's, uh, let's create a new layer. And let's try uh, uh, some of these uh, painting tools. Try the paintbrush. And there we go. And now you notice, here, let's uh, make this visible here. Now you notice as um, I can paint in this 2D view in addition to this, uh, to the 3D view. But you notice sometimes it, it, it has a little bit of difficulty at the, at the transitions uh, where, you know, one edge meets the other. So that's why when you're creating your UVs, you generally try to put these seams in the least conspicuous places. So, uh, you know, there are, there are some tricks that I'll show you for uh, getting these edges to match as nicely as possible. But, uh, you know, that's when you're creating your UVs, you should keep that in mind. Um, and uh, let's, let's check a look at the, at the brush tool since we've got it open. So uh, we've got this, we also have colorizer, which is nice if you've already got some sort of black and, uh, and white um, values going on just to add color to it. All right, so here we've got some uh, different shapes, which are rectangle, it's kind of cool. And then different torts, let me make this uh, round again. And then we have uh, different types of fall-offs. See? So, you know, see that dot versus try nozzle. See, it's almost the opposite. And then let's try uh, round. How about linear? See, different type of. Um, and then we can. Uh, just a little bit, kind of change the aspect ratio. And then a, a, a nice um, tool, is, uh, let me uh, stretch this out a little bit, is, uh, let's see, 
here we can uh, adjust the, the fall off this and make it how we like. So we have those stand, uh, stock ones, but this, uh, <coughs> you know, if you want to need to make suction cups or something like that, you, know, you just go bloop. Bloop. All right, let's look at uh, some of these other uh, tools. Got a clone stamp tool, should be pretty similar. Similar to uh, to Photoshop, and certainly that can be uh, helpful when uh, you know, let's see, uh, hold on, uh, control to sample. And you need to see, but it sampled this area that wasn't green. All right, and then uh, eraser, and then of course all these. See, I can uh, adjust the pressure. You know, I just want to kind of gently nudge it away. And the gradients uh, uh, kind of works a little bit differently in the 2D view and the 3D view. So, like, let's say, uh, let's go into a, a different layer here. And uh, let's look at some of these presets. All right. See? If I go like that, notice that it's painted my entire texture page. Whereas, you know, the way these UVs are laid out, it, it uh, doesn't make that much sense. But I can do something like this and see, fits right together nicely and it sort of distorts it and cuts it up on the 2D view to accommodate. But it looks just right in this view. So that uh, can be a nice way to kind of uh, deal, with, uh, deal with your seams or even just to just lay out your basic colors before you start painting. I, uh, I I really like the um, uh, the gradient tool. Now notice that the gradient is stopping after a certain point. That means this has a, an um, an alpha setup. Like notice in the thumbnail, this checkered part that's uh, some invisibility. So now if <clears throat> if I uh, delete this one, see now look what happens. See even though it's just a little one, but it's filling the whole the whole thing because it's it's not limited other than by um, how it's obfuscated. See like here if I did that in this view BAM it's gonna fill up that whole texture page but if I do it in the 3D view it's not doing it on the back of it. See there's gonna be a point where where it won't it won't paint you know approximately half. So what we can do is we, we set up a, an alpha for it. So here, I can just make this one black and uh, maybe bring the white value up a little bit. And now, see, we're getting it limited to the, uh, the part. Like, see, let's, here, let's turn off edit alpha. Now look in our rainbow. See, we had several other colors beyond beyond blue, but they're sort of dying because of our alpha. Let's go back and uh, edit our alpha. Bring that black value up there. See now, when we do one, see we're getting more of that pink value. See, that was where our black flag was. See, now we're getting a little bit more of this value over here. And now that's, so that's one way of just sort of uh, just going in here with this and you can just build uh, build things up but also here blend mode I don't have to limit my blend mode to just uh, my layer as we would uh, normally in uh, in Photoshop like so we make this in the light and multiply and there's even uh, a couple of crazy ones that are sort of unusual um, but your uh, your each individual brush stroke can also be used as a, as a blend mode like here let's, let's do a couple of screen Let's try a different one. Let's try uh, multiply. So we can add a little of the strength. Just do it with some transparency. All right. So let's uh, let's keep on looking at our our, our paint tools. 
And, uh, you know, certainly, um, let's uh, make a layer here. Uh, actually, before we continue with the paint tools, let's uh, look at some of our selection tools. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, this is set to subtract to selection. Let's set it to just new selection, and we'll turn feather off for now. So you notice I'm selecting from this side, but it's continuing on to the other side. But see, if I just do it here. And now when I turn to, see, that selection is just the surface. It's not just something floating in the air. And I can zoom in here to see exactly where that uh, selection edge is. Now, like, even if I do like, something like that, where I'm crossing over into more than one of these uh, <coughs> UV islands, I can see my, my selection uh, remains intact in the, in the 2D view. So here, let's let's uh, let's go and use that fill tool, and we'll pick a color. Let's go with this. See, and then try some of that overlay. Oop, that doesn't look so good. There we go. Let's try maybe. Uh, yeah, there we go. And whichever you know, once you stop uh, rotating your view, you know you see the March and ants. So you know, even if I just want to uh, go on here and just just paint, I certainly can. What color did I have? All right, let's check out some uh, some other uh, paint tools here. Uh, let's look at these. So basically, two types of fill. When you use the regular fill, it'll sort of separate. Like here, let's uh, turn off our our selection here. And. Uh, I'm sorry, let's, uh, let's look at our paint bucket. All visible layers, and you have a tolerance. So see, if I start to let's pick a color, which which color are you using? Something that's not here too much. Um, yeah, yellow. See, sort of filling in these little chunks. And also, it's not looking yellow because we're on this layer with this crazy, uh, crazy mode. See, and it's just sampling things within a tolerance. See, if I if I increase the tolerance, it'll fill in greater areas. If I give it some tiny little tolerance, you're just going to get these tiny little bits. But now, if I just go use the uh, uh, fill layer, it's going to fill whatever my selection is. And here, the tolerance really, really doesn't matter too much, you know. And then, like, see, I could, uh, let's try one of these other selections. This is one that I'd like to use, polygon selection. Use it over here. See now, if I go and use my uh, fill layer tool, is I just click on it. I don't even really even have to click in the view, <clears throat> and it'll just immediately uh, uh, fill my selection. All right, so. Uh, Let's look at um, at some of these guys. So first, we got the blur tool. So here, I'm going to go back to uh, to this layer and I'll increase our brush size a little bit. And once again, you got all the the same um, attributes that you would have for uh, just a regular brush. So often uh, with these uh, photo retouching tools, you're kind of you know kind of working with the uh, the pressure at a, at a lower at a lower setting. And see, this is already kind of blurry here. Let's crank it up so we can really see what's uh, what's going on. Yeah, it doesn't really look a whole much blurrier. Let's uh, let's try an area where there's yeah something like that will show up a little bit better. Let's first 
create a selection. And I'll go back and uh, use a blur tool. Our pressure, okay. See how it immediately softens up. All right, now we've got this selected. Let's uh, check out something else. We got a like Photoshop. We got a couple filters. You know, uh, uh, they're they're pretty similar to to Photoshop. So let's try a uh, Gaussian blur. So we can crank that up a little bit. Really blur it out. Nice. Let's try a couple more. Uh, let's try hue saturation. Looks nice. Let's try another one. Add a little, little bit. Has a little bit of noise in there. All right. If you were going to do extensive uh, retouching, you would probably actually bring it into Photoshop. Just, but for most basic needs. Just these few filters are really, uh, really get to it. But I'm not going to go through them in too much detail. They're pretty similar, you know, unsharpened mask, uh, emboss, texture blend. These are all uh, uh, very similar to um, uh, uh, the um, uh, 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 transfer modes. So not not that much different than uh, than Photoshop. So let's uh, let's look at some of these tools uh, that, that we also have on here. Let's, uh, let's let it sharpen. Tighten this up a little bit. It even gets to the point where we start getting these artifacts. And now, um, God, I'm just thinking of something now. Let me show you this one thing that I, I think is an important thing to set up in your preferences. Go to Edit. It's the uh, the number of undos uh, that are available. Depending on your um, memory size, you can set up a, a pretty massive uh, level of undos, which can really save you so much headaches. Because keep in mind, sometimes if you're painting something, you might be making you know like a hundred brush strokes in 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 a minute's time. So you know, <clears throat> it's not inconceivable to have to go back a, a hundred uh, uh, steps. To get back to where you're looking, so let's uh, um, let's go to body paint and uh, well, for one thing, I'm going to change the default to Photoshop, and then uh, let's see project border. This must be under memory undo depth. Yeah, see texture undo, minimum undo. I, I would just start adding some zeros. The uh, the old um, uh, uh, limit used to be two thousand, or, or used to be a thousand. Let's see what it can handle now. Yeah, ten thousand. I I would suggest crank it up to just the, the highest uh, level possible, and yeah, it'll maybe give a give another zero on there too. So that way, you know, it's awful if you're trying to go back into a project and you're just going uh, going back into your history, bam, 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 and then suddenly it just stops refreshing. So just crank that up to the, the highest value it'll, it'll allow, and it looks like it's about 10,000. <clears> and uh, minimum undo steps. Uh, or, or, okay, that was the texture undo, minimum undo step. I don't think we really need a minimum. So now, if I want to go back, I'm just going Control Z, and I uh, I'm getting getting rid of my artifacts. All right, and then the one I, I really love is the smear tool. This one is just so much, just like uh, a finger painting, and especially you know when you when you work in the in the three D D view, it's pretty cool. Just be able to blob it around, and certainly if you're using like a uh, Wacom pad or something, you know you all, all your um, Pressure sensitivity and direction, all these things can be dialed in to uh, uh, to enable the um, the the, uh, the the shape and pressure. 
can be uh, added to that um, uh, function. All right, let's uh, check out some of our other tools here. Kind of lightens it up. Let's crank up the uh, maximum exposure and the size of our brush a little bit. Kind of washes it out. And here, let's also crank up the exposure. You can see it a bit more. Saturates that color a little bit more. All right, let's uh, let's uh, maybe uh, go on another layer here, and uh, let's deselect. And uh, let's uh, maybe look at our uh, text tool. Find a nice place to put some, uh, some text here. So let's just say body paint. And then uh, let's find some sort of font. And that's just dependent on uh, whatever you've got loaded up. And sometimes if you got a, oh, here we go. Let's uh, let's find something nice and bold. There, oh, that's a nice one. And then uh, what color are we set up? Let's uh, some red, orange. Let's see, if we can either drop it like that. We'll just have my center. So we want to do it on an angle. Let's uh, crank up, crank up the size a little bit. Oh, too big. Yeah, let's feather it a little bit. See, let's see, are we crossing any uh, islands? No, we're right at the one. But certainly we could. See, half it's there, half it's there. So, text, text tool is pretty nice. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's look at a couple more paint tools. And here, two of my faves, the shape and the line tool. And once again, you know, you're just picking uh, picking a color. And here we got a whole bunch of different shapes. All these different star, star, I really like. Decide how many, how many stars you want. Let's pick a five point star. And whoop, 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 whoop. Notice I can rotate them. Then if I need to change their shape or anything, I can, uh, you know, just uh, go back in. Let's see the uh, outer radius a little bit bigger, so they'll make maybe a little bit of a twist. And then we'll do um, stroke instead. Let's see what that was. Oops, maybe a different stroke than whatever that blobby stuff is. And two, this can be um, let's, uh, let's go up into this. Different ways of growing it out. And let's uh, let's check out the uh, the line tool. 
this one I really love, especially if you're uh, having to, uh, you want to do shading right around these borders. Like here, let's kind of bring it up a little bit. Okay, I want to get right on those edges. Let's make these bigger. Oops, a little bit too big. <laughs> Now, sometimes uh, having the freedom of of the normal brush is nice, but sometimes oh, your hand is a little shakier than you want. So this is this is really the time, you know, to use the uh, the line tool. Now you can see it's just even though, in essence, I've just created a curved line, and when I look at my texture, I've created a curved line. But when I drew it, I was making a straight line. So, depending on how you see your model, you can really get, here, let's, let's just make that straight right there, see, and then boom, makes it pretty, and this is without any snap or anything, because, you know, certainly I can do these diagonal, or, you know, I could do, do a bunch radiating from one point, and, you know, in a way, it's almost quicker than just, just drawing lines with, with a brush, because it just clicks, and it's there, and, you know, you got these nice, perfect gradients, you can go in and, and tweak uh, uh, these two values to, to get the sort of fall off that you like. But I, I, I really love the, the line tool. And then sometimes, oh, you're getting this crazy mass of color, but it's like, oh man, I really love just that one little reddy green there. So, you know, I can just go there and just make sure I've got that uh, uh, safe.